Hey, welcome to Alva's Music. I'm Seth uh, with Seth's Tone Zone, as always. This week, I am bringing you guys Walrus Audio. We've had them for a little while, but we haven't kind of tried their new products in, uh, in quite a while. So we thought we got to get their most of their line. Uh, I'm down actually one pedal, even though I'm doing six different walruses here. We kind of had to get a crazy configuration to make this fit in the camera today. But um, I'm showing you six different walrus audio pedals uh, from their line and what they do. Just to kind of give you guys a broad example of uh, all the different pedals they have here. So <clears throat> we got them almost all straight, except for this last one here. We had to make it work. But uh, I'll make it work for you guys today. So, um, first of all, I'm playing a brand... We just got this in yesterday. I think you guys can see it. <clears throat> this is the brand new Player Series. They replaced the uh, MIM Strats. Strats. MIM Fenders. All the different uh, made in Mexico. They're still made in Mexico. Same great quality, but I really think they've improved them quite a bit. This is the... Uh, first of all, a brand new color called Tide Pool. I like it a lot. It's like a nice kind of a bluish, greenish, really more blue <laughs> color. Maple Neck. Uh, Telecaster HH, meaning dual humbuckers. You could split the coils in these, which is pretty cool. And uh, as always, I'm going through Victory V40 Deluxe. Uh, 212, two Celestian Creamback speakers, and... So far, I really like the sound of this guitar. These pickups are really nice. They've definitely improved the pickups in these. They changed the logo from the 70s to kind of the spaghetti traditional and added a uh, 20 second fret, which you don't see. I'm, hopefully I'm gonna, you know, when we get the Strat, and I think we're waiting on the Strat right now, uh, I'm gonna compare it to an older one we still have here. That'll be a cool video to do, compare the new one to the old one, so. The neck's very satin on the back as well, which I really like. So come check it out. <clears throat> There's a couple other ones, I believe. We're getting the P-Bass in and most of the line. They'll be trickling in here and there. So um, anyway, let me get into it. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee this morning. I just realized that I've had no coffee, and that's why I'm uh, already stumbling through it. Let's check out this Walrus stuff. The first pedal I have in line in the chain is the Deep Six Compressor. It's a very nice, it's actually a universal audio compressor it's based off of. 1176, probably? I think that was it. I was reading up on that. They, I think it's more inspired. I don't know if it really is the circuit. And I'm sure it's not. Yeah, but yeah. 1176 <laughs> is like a huge rack size circuit. There it is. See, he, look at Zach over here, the recording guy. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm just play pedals and I'm like, oh, oh, okay, cool. That's a nice thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, it has an attack. A clean blend, which is very useful, I find, in a compressor. If you don't want so much of the compressed signal, you can back that off and get more of your original signal. But then what's the point of a compressor? I mean, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, <coughs> you, you know, it's good for that. There's the overall level and sustain, which I'm guessing is the amount of compression itself, or gives you all that sustain. Um, I think it's also, they say has a bit of the Ross compressor and the, another real famous one. Oh, and the Dynacomps. They kind of they kind of took from everything and made their own thing. Uh, second on the list, actually, why do I not just show you that pedal first since I've talked about it enough here. Here's my clean tone regular. Neck pickup. Here is the Deep Six. Everything's about just about 12 o'clock. Yeah. You can definitely feel it squeezing. Here, I'll give an example. Off. On. Definitely evens out that. with the attack. I think that's kind of more of a delayed 
on the end of it when it's up here, meaning that initial note doesn't get hit. And it squeezes. It's cool, let's go the other way. That's super early, it's just hitting it almost right away. I had an overall clean blend going. Let's get more compression into it. That's really, really nice. That's a... I would probably never use that much, but. Bump up the sustain, sorry, it's a little loud. <laughs> it does have a lot of uh, kind of like studio grade uh, technology built in this thing. They really did do a good job on that. I like that one a lot. Anyway, I'm kind of just doing brief. I mean, I can go into deeper detail into that. Not too much, but... <laughs> Uh, moving on here, I got a lot of pedals to do today. I don't want to be here all morning. Zach has places to haunt, so <laughs> <laughs> you know stuff like that. This is a brand new pedal. This one just came out from Walrus. Walrus from Walrus Pedals. Uh, it is a parallel boost. Now, most of the time in boost signals, you're just going to get one signal, whether it's a clean boost or dirty boost or whatever it is. They kind of went for a parallel approach here, meaning you get two different kinds of boosts. One is like your typical clean boost, I believe, and one of them has, um, it's more of a mid boost. So they run in parallel, which is really nice. It has this mid control and uh, a bright control. So you can really mix different kinds of uh, boosts here. It also has a toggle switch here from 800 hertz and uh, 1K. So, is that is that like the crossover between the two? That's on the mids. Yeah, I think oh. it's on the mid boost. Oh, and, or the bright could be a crossover is, between the two. Yeah. Is that like the middle point of the mid boost thing? Or I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> like I said, this is kind of a brief overview, but it's really cool. Um, that was the one thing I was a little concerned about. It's not really a volume. You don't really control the volume of the boost. It's kind of like it's in. Hmm. So. I guess, I don't want to say that's a downfall. Maybe there's some like trimmers in here you can mess with. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't see anything on the website on it, but I'll show you what I mean. I'll just turn some knobs. So I'll have both of them here. I'm going to turn the bright down and see what that does. Just having like mid, and I'm going to have it on like 800 Hertz here. So that's regular clean. You can definitely hear that mid character. This is great for it's almost like a cock wah. Let's see what that 1K does, if it does anything. I don't know if it's doing much on that. Yeah, I think it's that's that's part of the I think it, brighter. I mean, yeah, I think it's like the, the center point of the mid boost, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Has that mid honk. Really? That that gets dirty. I like that. A little distortion in there. I'm gonna bring that bright and. This one, I'll do the bright by itself first, actually. That's not. This is, there it is. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that, that toggle does anything except the mids. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything. That's cool. So, like, if you want it all the way off, it's like a regular clean boost right here, just with the bright control. Oops. <laughs> Almost really the volume.
Both of them are on on 800k for the mid. I mean, yeah, Hertz. Sorry. <laughs> That's really nice. I like that a lot. Oh, let me try it with that. The nice tone shaping tool there. I like that a lot. <laughs> it's very useful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move on here for the sake of uh, time and uh, to the Warhorn. Um, Warhorn is an overdrive. Uh, they call it a mid-tone overdrive, which let's face it. <laughs> Kind of sounds like a certain green pedal I've done a million videos on with a mid boost in it. <clears throat> you know, two screamers. Uh, sorry, two screwbers as I like to call them. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, I guess it's their own take. This one has a little toggle switch in the middle that does symmetrical clipping, which is the traditional kind of clipping that you would find in the tube screamer circuit. And asymmetrical, which is more like what Boss was doing back in the day like their super overdrives asymmetrical clipping. Look at how much of a nerd I am that I know that. Um, so I'll switch between the two, see if we can hear much of a difference. There's a bass and treble control, uh, overall volume, level and drive. Not much to it, it's just an overdrive, but let's see how useful it is. Here's the clean. I'm gonna go to bridge. It was about 11 o'clock on the drive. I think you gotta give it a little bit more. You can definitely hear the mids. Let me flip that. It's definitely asymmetrical there. It's a little louder, less compressed. Awful lot of trouble, although I am on that bridge pick up there. I'll go to the neck. Mess with these tones a little bit. A little bit more bass. Turn the bass down. that. I don't want to give us any more treble. There's a lot of treble in this. Woo! It's very versatile. I'm going to turn the treble down, bass up. So as you can see, you can easily shape that. And let's gun the drive. supposed to do there's not supposed to be a ton of gain in that pedal but it's very versatile so I'm gonna move on here this is the iron horse distortion pedal it is a pretty aggressively voice kind of classic distortion that's how they definitely marketed it or this says on their uh, description has a level tone distortion control not much to it there is a toggle though that goes from most compressed and in the middle, there's no uh, diodes or anything going on. There's no compression, so it's a little more open. And then, like, just a little bit compressed. So you get a nice little three-way. I think I have it on the most compressed setting right now. I'll find out as I play. So let's hear some distortion here. Uh, middle toggle. I gotta watch the level on these because they definitely change. You hear that openness. I only got it about halfway up on that and the tone is 
Actually, way back, this thing gets super... Super trebly. Which is... Let me just see a little more distortion. Definitely got that classic distortion. Not as amp-like as I like, but some guys might like this kind of sound, you know. Here's the most compressed setting. I could tell. Picking up some kind of signals over here. Anyway, gotta move on here. This is the Julia Chorus. It's very nice. It has a chorus vibrato. Um, in the center position here, this says D, C, and V. So D is a little bit more of your dry signal. The C is for chorus, V is for vibrato. You can kind of draw the line in between each of the effects. It's got a depth, a rate, um, a lag, which is kind of like the delay signal of it. And it does a sine and triangle type wave form. It's more classic chorus, so I'll play it a little bit for you. <laughs> It's that very, it's very 80s, but I like it a lot. So what I mean is if I back off on this, it's more clean. It's still there. If I go more this way, if I brought up. turn up this lag gets kind of more warbly but you can kind of ride this line in between so it's more chorusy there almost Leslie like Let's try this real quick a little different waveform. Anyway, I'm going to go more into detail with this one. I'm going to battle it against a uh, different chorus from a different company that's very price range, same, features the same. So you'll hear more of that pedal. Moving on to the last pedal here, which is the uh, ARP87 or ARP87 as I like to call it. It is kind of a multifunction delay. It's got uh, different subdivisions quarter note, dotted eighth, your triplet, and your eighth note. Overall level, dampen, which is your tone control, your overall repeats. The X kind of does different things on different settings. It mainly is kind of controlling the amount of warble in like the analog setting and different things. So there's a digital setting, analog setting, um, <clears throat> slapback, and uh, kind of a lo-fi delay thing going on. So you can use it for different kinds of delays. Tap tempo, very useful to have. And uh, let's hear it really quick. This is in the digital setting, so you can hear that pr uh, pristine repeats. So if I mess with this dampen, brighter now. Let's see what X does. X, I like that. It's kind of giving it a little bit of, a little warble. It's not warble, it's hard to explain on the digital. You know, you don't want warble. That's what you're going to get on analog kind of a setting. Um, little dotted eight. Kind of have to mess with this thing. Anyway, let's go on to the analog setting. I can already hear the warble in it. 
That's one thing I notice I don't like as personally as a player. When you switch to another setting, you kind of have to reset this. It goes to quarter notes. That's a little weird. Which is kind of weird, but yeah, you can live with it. I mean. So you can definitely hear a lot. I'm just put this dampen down. A lot darker. Very cool. Uh, I'm gonna move on to lo-fi delay, which is gonna be really cool and weird. Whoa. Definitely crazy. Wow. That's crazy. They were not kidding when they said lo-fi. No, super lo-fi. Oh my god. That's a lot. It's almost like too much for me, but it's cool if you like that. Cool. And the last one is your classic slapback. I can't play slapback stuff. Cool. That sounds like a spring reverb. It does. Well, that's what that was trying to emulate yeah. back in the day. Like that. Johnny Cash stuff. I don't know. It was kind of, it was studio delay. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have old reverb tanks. All that. Reverb tanks, delay tanks. That's how it all started. That's cool. Anywho, that's pretty much a little overview. I would love to get more in-depth with these pedals. And uh, I'll be back next week with a new video. And thanks for joining me. Subscribe, comment below. Uh, come try out these fenders. Try out these amps, please. Help us out. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next week.